God is always faithful. Sometimes we just have to ask God to help us see things from God's perspective. Because Abraham was faithful to God, and God was faithful to the promise to give Abraham many descendants, God acknowledged Mary's faithfulness to him by choosing her to be the mother of the Savior. After Elizabeth had finished praising God for the coming Savior, Mary began singing a song of praise to God that reminds us very much of Hannah's song of praise when she became pregnant with baby Samuel in answer to her prayers. Verses 46 through 55 constitute what is generally known as the Magnificat, or Mary's song. The song can be divided into three strophes or stanzas. The first strophe, verse 46 through 49, speaks of God's grace or favor on Mary. The second strophe, verses 50 through 53, talks about what God has done in the life of the people of Israel. The third stanza, verses 54 and 55, is about God's faithfulness in keeping his promise to Abraham by sending the Messiah. And that brings us to our key verse for today, which reads, The Magnificat, Mary's Song of Praise. Mary responded, Oh, how my soul praises the Lord, how my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Luke chapter 1, verse 46 through 47. The statement, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, indicates a total involvement of the whole self, emotional and spiritual, in the praise of God. The use of both soul and spirit underlies this fact. The word soul is a translation of the Greek word suke, which generally means self or inmost being. It is the center of and makes up the whole being. The soul is the seat of feelings, emotion, desire, and affection. The word magnify in Greek is megaluno, and it means to make great, to extol, or to esteem highly. Spirit in Greek is pneuma, and oftentimes it is synonymous with soul. Here, spirit speaks of the rational or mental disposition, the core of the inner being. Mary employs the totality of her being, the soul and spirit, to glorify God and grateful worship of God, her Savior. In verse 48, Mary gives the reason for her rejoicing and gratitude. God has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. This means that God looked upon her with respect, that God showed favor to her, an otherwise insignificant person. To be both woman and slave, makes her place even worse. The society has no regard for her, but in contrast, God has regard for her. God has looked upon Mary with favor and has given her a place of honor. There are two pairs of contrasting parallels that are direct results of God's mighty act in the coming of the Messiah. The hungry here describes those who realize their need for God and aspire for spiritual food. Those who fear him, they are fed are filled with good things, and are shown mercy. But on the contrary, those who are rich, proud, and self-sufficient without God are sent empty away. Mary insinuates God's transformation of society, whereby the proud and powerful are brought low, while the lowly are brought up. Not only does Mary represent the humble who have been exalted, but Nazareth as well, which signifies the revolutionary aspect of God's act through the coming of the Messiah. Historically, the Old Testament is full of examples in, of the proud and mighty whom God, by his infinite power and design, brought down. Examples include Pharaoh, Haman, and Nebuchadnezzar. The scriptures include all proud and haughty people. Likewise, there are abundant examples of the humble exalted by God, Joseph, David, Mordecai, and Daniel. The Bible includes all the humble. Here, Mary celebrates God's mercy to Israel. This act of mercy is an old promise or covenant God made to Abraham and to all his generations after him. It is a living covenant to all humankind that is fulfilled in the incarnation of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So here's our lesson. Through this hymn of praise, Mary reveals the excellent nature of God, his divine power and authority over all things, both spiritual and human his holiness, his mercy and justice, and his faithfulness and trustworthiness in fulfilling his promises. Through the incarnation of Christ, we realize the omnipotence, holiness, mercy, and justice, and faithfulness of God.